Hey, hey. Google, can you hear me? I can hear you, Sean. Great to see you. You too, bro. Man. <laughs> All right. Are we good? Yeah, we good, eh? Sick, sick. Sorry about that. No, dude. Thank you for joining us. Welcome to episode 11 with Dougal Patterson. Speaking from water, we, we dissect those who know it best. And we are very, very lucky today to, to have Mr. Patterson with us. He is a world-renowned photographer and big wave surfer and uh, a true South African legend. So um, with all that said, Dougal, thank you very much for joining us. Wow, Sean, you make me feel good. <laughs> I feel like I should record that and listen to it whenever I need a bit of a pep. Ah, thank it. you. <laughs> well, um, yeah, I received that. Currently speaking, we're uh, we're in the middle of the WSL finals. Uh, um, you just broke broke away from that to to join us. So thank you for taking this time. Yeah, I'm stoked. Eh? It's still going in the background there, man. My my daughter's watching it, so she's going to come in and give me a report every time something happens. But yeah, I'm stoked. Love it. Love it. And um, you were uh, recently just charging some some epic waves I saw on Surfline. So congratulations on that. <laughs> Cheating death. Yeah, I tell you, that was that was pretty terrifying. I felt like a, felt like an old man out there. I was like, what am I doing? I was I was terrified. I was scared. I was rethinking everything. And then I yeah, I, I kind of took a different approach, I suppose. I mean, because my, my tow partners Fabian's just 23 and he was dragging me uh, like we started out with him doing safety I, I mean me doing safety and I was watching the waves and there's like some really big some you know 20 foot waves coming through and dungeons is terribly unpredictable and uh, I, I did safety for a while and then eventually we swapped and while he was dragging me into the lineup I just put my I rested my head in the deck of my surfboard and I said to myself I'm scared <laughs> and then I decided I kind of asked myself what would you do if you weren't scared and I went out and I, yeah, I got some incredible waves. Eh? I really, I, and, and yeah, like you said, I got into Surfline. It always makes me feel good. Now, now can, can we start there? Can I want to know more about the wave that I saw and everyone else saw. Um, was it, um, was it abnormal for you? Was it, was it a, a special one in your book or was it an everyday experience? Uh, to, and, and if you could set the stage with your um, location of, of dungeons and, and how uh, impressive and gnarly of a, of a beach scape that, that is. All right. Well, I mean, dungeons itself is, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty ominous environment. I mean, the, the wave itself breaks uh, around an island inhabited by seals, Seal Island. And uh, right in front of it is a, is a, a deep body of water that we call Shark Alley. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's infamous for having great whites, uh, even though we've never actually seen them there. Like it's, it, it seems like, you know, whenever you come, come off your board, it feels like you kicking around waiting to be taken from below. It's quite terrifying, but uh, yeah, I mean, st standing over the whole setup is a, a, there's a mountain that's called the Sentinel and the Sentinel, as you know, it's literally, it's like, it's like a sentry that stands guard to the bay and um it's a it's a very gloomy ominous feeling and uh, the whole place is steeped in in mystique and and folklore that it leaves it's it's a it's you kind of feel like a like a kid in the graveyard in the graveyard at 12 o'clock at night that kind of ghoulish <laughs> yeah and, and and just the name itself i mean dungeons i mean it's it's terrifying i i'm not sure who named it but i, I wish it had a different name it sound far less scary but yeah, I mean that's yeah that, that that day itself. I mean we, I've um, yeah. I mean I, I'm a relative latecomer to surfing dungeons. I mean I only started surfing it in my late thirties, just because of a promise I made to my wife. Even though I'd already surfed other waves around the world, she just I had to wait for her to be ready. So um, I'm 47 now, but um, yeah, I, I've I've ridden some truly terrifying waves out there. And um, and the wave that I rode, uh, it wasn't yeah, you know, it was two Tuesdays ago. Uh, I almost rode by mistake, um, just because my first wave was a incredibly easy roll in, 
And then the second one that, that came through that, that made Surfline, I thought, all right, well, let's get a couple of easy roll-ins before I, I really get to work. And uh, yeah, it just, it stood up in the bottom, dropped out of it. And I was riding in a 11.2, which is exceptionally long for there anyway, for anywhere actually. And uh, yeah, it, uh, lucky it was clean enough and I got my full rail in and I had to drag myself to the bottom of that wave. But yeah, it was, uh, yeah, um, the guys on the channel were really excited. <laughs> I got a lot of kudos. <laughs> Truly, truly legendary of, of, a, of, a, of a picture also. And um, you, uh, I, I did, I did my, my good research on you before, before this interview and your, your name is Dragon Slayer. That's, that's what your, your parents um, named you as growing up. Um, you come from a long line of uh, uh, intense individuals. Your, your grandfather was in World War I, I believe, and your father was a, a expert um, mountaineer explorer. And um, I, I would like to know first a little bit more about them and then how they were such, um, I guess, genetic building blocks to the person you have become. Okay. Yeah, yeah, it was, it was, yeah, my grandfather was in, fir in the first, uh, in the second world war, actually, he, he was, uh, he flew, he flew flying boats uh, in, in the RAF. And um, yeah, I, I, I guess he was, a, he was a, Hmm. It was kind of an enigma in 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 that way, but um, yeah, he he it it, it was a he left a kind of a, a legacy of 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 exploration. Uh, I mean, he he as a, a as a young man had a uh, I mean, while he was learning how to fly the planes, he actually was coming in to land. You know, uh, late at night they were doing a, a night landing, and uh, he he. He misjudged it, and he and he actually flipped the flipped the plane, and the plane sank, and and um, he was the only one to survive. So he was, you know, he he lived the rest of his life with this terrible sensation of, uh, you know, of uh, that his his crew, his initial crew, had actually died at at his hands. And he went to his command at the time and asked. He said, "Why don't you, you know, I want you to put me in in fighter planes, you know, because at least then I can only kill myself." But 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 uh, yeah, he he ended up his commander ended up talking him into you know to, um, continuing with in the flying boat captain role, and um, yeah, I mean he was he was part of a yeah there was yeah, <laughs> and then my dad sort of you know it, my my dad was a was a geologist and still still in the era I think it was the last era where they took um, back, uh, I mean husky dogs into Antarctica, and um, and uh, you know the, the pictures of, of my dad there were inspired always inspired me. He had a he he had a um, a husky dog himself that you know that he called Viking and um, and the, you know his gear was still in a time when it was leather leather and sheepskin coats that, that they were wearing and their and their pick handles were still made of wood. So, <laughs> So yeah, and and my dad at the age, I think he was twenty three or twenty four, but but he was the leader of the expedition. And um, at one stage, this this dog of his um, Viking uh, slipped down into a crevasse, and uh, my dad roped himself up. And if you know anything about crevasses, I mean, ice kind of continuously expands and contracts. So uh, I mean, to go to go down in a crevasse, you know, is yeah, it's pretty stupid, you know. The ice just closes. So anyway, he went down after his dog, and he pulled his dog out, and he got a he got a medal of honor for that from the from the SPCA when he returned home. So yeah, my, I, yeah, I mean, I, yeah, I, I feel like uh, I've always been inspired by by my dad and grandfather with with their adventures, and uh, I, I mean, as a as as a younger man, it felt like you know, all the, all the good stuff had already been done, you know, all the highest peaks had been climbed, uh, you know, and it was, we were into more of a digital era, era where we were sort of repeating things. And I suppose that's how I stumbled into big waves that suddenly I found peaks that hadn't been scaled before. And um, yeah, those, the, those, those became my peaks. What, what age were you when you discovered that you needed the, the big wave? Well, um, well, as a, 
I mean, I came to sur- uh, I mean, I came to surfing itself pretty late, only at age seventeen, and it was uh, I realized pretty quickly that uh, you know uh, I I wasn't going to get the skill set uh, to surf small va- waves really well, quickly or easily, and uh, and one day we were out in in bigger waves, and I realized I was the only guy going on them, and and something twigged me, and I thought, all right, this is you know, uh, I'm I'm ambitious, and I want to be the best I can at this, so. Uh, my, my, my best shot is that is with big waves and uh you know i was always that kid at the local school who was happy to climb to the, the top of the highest point or when you know when you're on the edge of a lake and there's rocks that you can climb to jump in i never had a problem jumping from the highest rock and i've always loved holding my breath so it seemed like a natural <laughs> goat a natural yeah a perfect storm really and i don't mind taking big hits in water and it's it's only falling on water it's not like falling on rock or sand so i thought why not just give it a go so here's here's what i would uh really like to to dive deeper into you you didn't grow up at the beach you you were you were miles and miles from the ocean how did you find one the love of water and i guess swimming and then later in life uh what what was the precipice for you to say hey that thing called surfing is where i want to go and um, what, what was kind of the chain of events there? Well, I remember, I, I remember like when we always used to go on holiday out on the coast. And, and, and I remember like a, as a kid, I think I must have been probably five or six. I remember there was, a, there was an older boy in our campsite who, who had a surfboard. And, uh, and I remember looking at this thing and thinking, you know, I, actually, he said, I'll, I'll take you surfing with me one day. And we arranged the time and I ran down to, to where he was staying. And I, I got there to find that he'd already gone to the beach without me. And, and I remember at that age of five, standing there with utter determination and thinking, gritting my teeth and thinking, this will never happen to me again. Like this, like this pursuit is, is worth spending my life on. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it was a long time before we got to live by the coast. But I mean, I've been keeping that, that promise I made to myself ever since. I love that story. Now, <laughs> when was it that, like, well, let me set this up. Uh, you're not only, uh, as I said at the start, a uh, world-renowned big wave surfer, you're also a world-renowned photographer. So photography and art are, are the separate side, side of you. It's more, um, I guess, it, it, is your, it is your profession. So when, when did you um, first discover your camera and, and the arts in general? And then h- how did you develop your, your very uh, unique um, uh, way of uh, visual display? Um, if anyone ha- has gone to your website and seen your work, um, it, it is very unique and brands pay you lots of money to go all over the world to collect um, your, your images and, and craft the concept. Uh, so there's a, there's a lo- long uh, road to get to that point. What, what was your first point of, um, I guess, camera control artistic vision? Well, I, I mean, all I mean, all my stories kind of uh, well, not all my stories, but I mean, my 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 surfing stories and my photography stories run very close parallels, and 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 they have very similar similar kind of genesis stories. So on on the other side of my family, on my mom's side, uh, uh, my mom's first cousin was one of the most famous um, fashion photographers during the seventies and eighties. And uh, he would come. He would come back to our house, you know, uh, from back from London. We were living in South Africa and Johannesburg, inland, uh, the city of gold, the infamous apartheid city of Johannesburg. <laughs> That's where I grew up. And and um, and he he would come back with these with these tear sheets from Vogue magazine, and, and these these fashion pictures and these and. Uh, he would lay them out on the floor and he'd show them to us and he had these cameras around his neck and he had this kind of way of his, these glasses and this sort of vibe about him. And uh, I, w- I would look at his vibe and, I, and I'd, I'd think, yeah, man, I, I see exactly what you're doing. And, and I'd look at his pictures and I'd think I could do that. So, at, at, you know, at the same time, it was also, it, uh, that was a decision I made, you know, it, relatively early on, probably age 13 or 14. I thought, well, I could do that. That seems like a good job. I knew I didn't want to be a fashion photographer. That's that's not me. I'm, but I'm very much a family man. But you know, I mean, the the idea that you could commercially make money from photography um, really appealed to me. 
Um, and um, yeah, I, I mean, I've never, uh, you're saying, you know, the parallel between my my big wave surfing and and my photography is that I, I definitely, um, uh, there's a there, there's a proverb that that, that describes it, it says um, even a blunt axe used with skill will bring results, and and that's me <laughs> as a big wave surfer and as a photographer. It's just like I I, I just do the same thing over and over and over again. I've I, you know I'm a one trick pony. I've got a very narrow uh, area that I excel in, and I, and I keep doing the same thing over and over again. So so that's what happened with with my photography. I just identified, you know. Um, uh, a certain kind of fashion photography as an entry point and then from there I wanted to get into advertising and uh, it, it was a matter of um, apprenticing other guys and uh, I, I just imitated guys who, who, whose style I, I really liked um, and then started to make it my own obviously took it in my own direction um, but but my but my primary my primary skill set is still just I love people I love engaging people, and 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 that's the overlap with, with with you know why I like big wave surfing is is almost like the big waves are secondary it's it's the people and and the community and the connections that I have within that that really is the true value. So it's the same with my photography. You know I I, I get to when things are good I get to make enough money that I don't have to work the whole time. And I can chase big waves, and most importantly, it's so that I can be with my family and be a present dad and a husband. <laughs> what What was your your first photo job, and how 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 did you get it? And what was it that you said, "Oh, I can make money doing this. I'm going to get it." And then, how did that business model change? <laughs> oh, my first job. Um, my first job was I was at university, and someone, uh, you know, all, all the all the all the best for photographic students were away on a on an excursion, and and the only students left in the department were the ones who weren't excelling. So I was there, and and a lady came in. She didn't know that the that the dregs were only left in the photographic department, and she said she needed a uh, wedding photographer. Photo and I said, well, I'm your guy, and. Um, I went, I went, yeah, I, I made her cry. I made that lady cry because when she, when she saw her wedding photographs, I'd completely blown it. Everything was either underexposed or overexposed. And um, yeah, they paid me quite a lot of money to do it. And I, I totally blew it. Hey? <laughs> and then did you say no more to weddings and go somewhere else? Or like, <laughs> how, did, how did you recover? You know, you, that's actually true. I, I, I've carried a, a quite a post-traumatic stress, I think, from uh, from, from wedding photography. Um, no, I, I haven't. I, I've never been paid to shoot a wedding again. <laughs> yeah, but that was, yeah, I, I mean, yeah, that was, I, 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 yeah, I, I come from the school of hard knocks. So, so uh, you know, big, big mistakes. I have have always been like a, the, my primary actually form of learning. So fast forward to recent times, um, I, the WSLs again are ha are happening right now. Um, I I understand from Instagram that your photos are the ones that are wrapping the entire venue of of the uh, lower trestles location, and they're they're beautiful. Um, what what was what's your um, creative mindset going into a job like that how how do you go about uh doing um such work okay well i mean so so i mean my like over the years i've i, I like a i've got a couple of specialties and and one of them is working with um athletic brands shooting shooting their their range of clothing in different locations uh using athletes so I, I, I've got I've got a, a pretty good body of work of that on my on on my website, and uh, a, a friend of mine who's a who's a full time photographer for for, for the WSL, a surf photographer, because I don't shoot surf photography at all, you know, just they, they they needed a guy you know who did who did did that that kind of work because they were wanting to up the game a bit. Some of the some of the stuff had hadn't been. Um, 
really let's let's say world class uh, as the rest of the brand uh, their, their portraits until that stage so they wanted to bring continuity into it uh, so they looked at my site and they and they commissioned me and it was yeah i mean it was a, a very exciting commission for me uh you know to i I've, I've worked with with kelly slater and steph before and um and and a couple of other people and, and surfed with them over the years but uh you know we, yeah so we went to we went to the event a little bit earlier uh at my, my my daughter one of my daughters my 12 year old was my was my assistant and then i had uh one of the one of the wsl guys um was was running uh data for me and uh we, we brought in a proper hair and makeup artist which uh, immediately made a big difference for each of the girls when they came in because they you know they they end up looking like they're going to the prom or something you know the hair like that too much or too much makeup whatever so we brought in like a top level makeup artist and it was yeah it was lovely you know I, I got to sit and talk to each of the athletes I mean well especially the ladies because they had to sit for like half an hour and get their hair and makeup done um you know and like I said that's my primary skill is I just I, I genuinely like talking to people I'm genuinely intrigued with their stories um so I think that's that you know that's that was a that translated naturally into like you know great great pictures for them and I, I mean, yeah, I mean, that's that's the final is going on right now. And every now and again, at the bottom of the screen, one of my portraits <laughs> pitches up, and I'm like, yeah, feels good. Eh? I love it. So so good. Now, when you were over over on, in California, were you able to surf? Uh, no, no, we we shot that in South Africa, huh? Oh, you we, did. We oh. It in Jay Bay. Got yeah. it. When when they came to town. Yeah, 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 yeah. I understand. Yeah, we, so so you. You surf the big waves, but do you surf all other waves? I do, hey. I, I mean, if it's not daytime now, I can't show you. But I mean, our, our house is hung throughout with surfboards of every. You know, I've I've got a longboard above here, a traditional sort of longboard, and then I've got an eight eight twenty there, and then there's a wooden, a, a handmade wooden twenty on that wall. That's that's like a five six, eight, and then there's a single fin eight footer on the roof there, and then there's yeah, I I. I you know, I've 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 gone through, like I say, because I because I don't come from a great skill set, I've had to ride a lot of bad boards to try and figure out, you know, how how to surf well. Um, yeah. So I I I mean, I I spent a certain period of time riding a finless board in in big waves, like a, a you know a, a, a local breakout front. Um, I learned how to ride a finless board in 12 foot waves. And, you know, once I finally sort of felt like I got that right, uh, I decided I never wanted to do it again because it was just utterly terrifying. Fins are very useful things when the waves get big. But, yeah, I, I, I mean, I ride all kinds of waves, but, but you know, I'm a family man and I work, so I, 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 can't, I can't just surf the whole time. And then also being 47, it's, it's tiring, you know. You, you can't just surf the whole time so I, I i try to i try to wait for the big swells and then when the big swells come you know if it's a three or four day swell then i'll surf like i'll surf the swell the whole way through if work and family time permits so when it's on like i'll 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 <laughs> it's it, it's it's like doing a triathlon you know it'll it'll be like take the ski out and then run safety and then it'll be and it'll be paddle for a while and then it's like then you lose your board you got to swim and then you're back on the ski and then you're paddling and then you got to get the ski back out then it's back to the other side of, you know of the bay and then it's paddling out again and then you're riding waves and then snap the leash back in again so yeah when it's on i go hard <laughs> and, and in these environments the I, w I would like to know more about the aesthetic you find you know you're a you're a seasoned well well established artists you the the emotion of the water runs runs through you but not many people or at all in the world get to go to these um locations that you do where the water is doing what it's doing uh i would like to know from you how how does how does that feel and what what is it about the water when it's doing that that it makes you drive to go seek it again and again as opposed to say um a smaller wave somewhere that is not as um, emotionally intense. Yeah. Look, I mean, there's a, 
Yeah, I mean, there's a, there's a lot of nuances to that. Uh, I mean, there's a, there's a certain feeling that you, that, that you get that, that comes up through the soles of your feet uh, when, you, when you stand on, 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 on a very big wave. You know, when you paddle in and you get to your feet and it's like a, you know, like, like a vibration that comes up through your feet as you drop down. You know, um, and it's it, it's it's not it's it's not an emotional thing. It's 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 literally a physical sensation. And 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 you ride one of these big waves out. When you kick out, it's this vibration stays in your body. You can feel it. The vibration goes up through your feet, and it kind of comes up. And it's almost for me it goes like I'm like <laughs> it comes up top of your head. And at the same time, when you you know when you ride, or, you know when you get caught by by, by some of these giant waves. Uh, you know the the energy of these things breaking somehow you know this this the, uh, you know i mean this the it's like the energy of this breaking wave somehow when it breaks on you some of it kind of seems to go into you you know <laughs> uh, I, I mean the 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 rush of 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 riding them uh, you know has has possibly to do with that sensation of coming through your feet and the other one is to do with 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 survival, um, but the but the the come down afterwards. Whew, uh, I mean, it could be terrible. I mean, it can take it like it's it, it's like the wave keeps kind of rolling through you for uh, you know a, a day or week afterwards, and it can be quite a downer afterwards. Eh? Um, yeah. But there is also, uh, I mean, I, I know what you're asking about the quality of the water. Um, I, I, I think I used to be more, I definitely used to be more, more sort of uh, poetic about, about, about the nature of, of, of the body of water. But um, I have been in situations now where, where, where two, two of my closest friends were, were um, like uh, nearly killed in separate incident, incidences while we, were, while we were surfing together. And um, like very, 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 very difficult situations. And uh, I, I think now the side I fall on more is, is this wonder of this body of water that's, that's almost benign to, to you. You know, it, 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 it's, it, it's, not like, it's not like a fist that belongs to something that's trying to hurt you. It's just, it's just like something that would just could kill you without even you know knowing that you were alive you know it, it's 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 not a living thing it's almost like a benign body that is um yeah do you know what i'm saying yes very very <laughs> deep, well said and and how do you know when it is not time for you to go like where is that that line in the sand where you say all right i don't want any of that or i want all of that because oh. From the perspective of the outside looking in, what I've seen of you um, is just complete gnar, and I, I personally can't imagine. So, um, where's the safety, and where where where's the comfort, and where do you say, "Ooh, give me that uh, juice"? Yeah, 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 yeah. Yes. Um. So yeah, I mean, just like a yeah, just like I said to you in the beginning there, you know, with with Fabi and my my tow partner or my my friend towing me out to me resting my head on the top of my board and saying I'm scared and saying that aloud to myself. Uh, in, in, increasingly, I, I found that it's, it's, uh, it's really important to be scared. Um, you know, I, I, I think I've spent a lot of time trying to eliminate fear, but um, I'm, I'm more cognizant of, of fear now as um, it's, it's, It's like if if you're not scared, uh, there's a problem, and uh, you you're in more danger than than you realize. Um, it's like it's like it's like recently I I had an experience. So so I'm a, a spear fisherman or a free diver also, and uh, I I got to go down into the world's deepest free diving pool in Dubai, which goes down. It's like it's um it's it's 60 meters down obviously i didn't go to 60 meters but i had a diver a diver with me and we were going up and down and i was i, I was going for a personal best uh, depth and just 
just the warmth of the water and the air and whatever. And, and, and hang on, let me turn my lights on again. <laughs> Uh, and uh, sorry, and, and the temperature of the water, I was feeling so comfortable. Uh, I, I mean, I, I was sitting at the bottom of the line for like three minutes and I was like, well, I better go up now. And, and, and as I came up, uh, I, I shallow water blacked out just, but, you know, just as I got to the top uh, and, and the guy who was with me, if I wasn't there, like, you know, he held me up. And, it, it's, and my, the lesson that I learned from there was when you're feeling so good that, that, you, that you don't need to breathe, and you feel like you could stay there forever in an environment that's unnatural, then you're in a bad place. So it's the same like with fear. It's like now it, when I'm completely in a complete absence of fear in a dangerous situation, that for me has become like a marker, a red flag. Um, yeah, because it's, yeah, it's, you, 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 you've lost one of your primary instincts. And yet with, to feel scared and to still go, me, yeah, you can, go. My girl wants to watch the end so she can see the finals. Uh, yeah, but so, so to, 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 feel, to feel terrified and to still go requires you to use all of your skill set and cognizance. And uh, you're actually safer going scared than you are with an absence of fear. Beautiful. Mm -hmm. um, now, uh, let, let, cut real quick. I, yeah. I, this Zoom has changed on me and they're saying I have eight minutes left unless I upgrade this account. Um, can, I, <laughs> can I can I go upgrade this? Can you give me one second? Yeah, yeah, go for it, bro. All right, all right. Give me just like five five minutes to go get this credit card. I'll be right back. Okay. Do you want to just you, you you can just message me when you're done, or, or or I'll just stay here. Yeah, yeah. I'll message you when I'm done. Perfect. And um, okay, I might I'll, I might even send you over a new link so I don't even have to do no this problem. upgrade thing. Does that sound good? Cool. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's good. Just just send it on Instagram again. All right, yeah, give me 10 minutes and we'll, we'll link back up. I'm going to send you a new, new code. Sick. Okay, cool. See you now. All right. Okay. Great. Yep. Boom. Go. Excellent. Game on. Game on. Okay, let, let's, we, we good? Everything good? Yes. Beautiful. Good. All right, let's, let's pick up where we left off. Um, okay. What I'm, what I'm really, uh, like, like, you mentioned the physicality of, of what you do and, and okay. the, the gnar of that. So for any, anyone who aspires to do anything as such at, in, at any, any level, you must do a daily regimen. Tell, tell me about kind of what you do every day to make sure that you're physically and mentally prepared to then go into this in, insane environment that you do. Well, um, well, she said, I'm always doing something. Hey, my, my, like what's, what's hard for me is, is, is to do nothing. I, I don't think that's, that's unusual. I'm sure there's lots of people like that, but I, I like, uh, there's, there's always stuff, you know, I, obviously, I, I mean, I had a, I had a really bad back injury when I was, was 23 that, that, that laid me out for like eight or nine years. And, and I've had a lot of shoulder stuff and neck stuff and whatever, but it, it, it was only sort of in my, uh, mid thirties, really. I, I mean, I, I kind of limped along with that stuff, but only my mid thirties that uh, started to realize that you could actually rehab that stuff out. So I, I, I feel like I'm constantly doing like uh, conditioning stuff, uh, which means that my body works well, even even when it gets a bit stiff and sore. Like you know, you, you kind of work through it, but everything's measured. So I do, but a little bit of I walk a lot. I walk a lot every morning. I walk a lot. I uh, what's a lot? I do a how, bit of... how long? How far oh. do you go? No, no, I, I mean a lot. Like I, I, no, it's. I mean, I go and walk on our local beach at like five thirty in the morning, you know, and I just have a contemplative time and I listen to. Yeah, I have a contemplative time. I start my day, and then sometimes I walk again in the evening. It'll depend. It depends again what's happening or who I'll walk with. And then, uh, but uh, a spearfish, spearfish is, is, is a, a big, a big thing. So uh, that's how I train my breath hold. Uh, and then swim. I like to swim when I can. I'd, I'd alternate. Otherwise, you'd just be doing this stuff the whole time. Um, I, I ride my bike and then I, I, I've got all these, these kind of funny gym programs that I do that are all sort of body weight, power to weight, ratio, strength stuff. Um, yeah, and then yeah, 
but I'm I'm always moving. I'm I, I'm I'm always I'm always doing I'm always doing something. And, and wrestling's hard. Teaching and, and delivering what you've learned to the community is also a big part of, of what you do and what what you're yes. a, a, what living. Um, yeah. You want to live uh, live behind yeah. uh, have uh, have left behind. Yeah. Tell us a little bit about where that fosters in you. Why why you believe this to be such an important thing? And um, tell maybe a little bit about who who it is that you uh, that that does this with you. Nice, nice, nice. Yeah, so so for for whatever reason, I think I think I think growing, I I didn't really, maybe I wasn't someone who was very mentorable, but I mean maybe it was because I like I, as I explained, I, I've always felt like a blunt axe. Um, but uh, yeah, I, I, so it's 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 been a huge value for me to, to kind of do for others that what, what I, I felt hasn't, wasn't really, you know, done for me. I was never a natural choice, you know, as, as someone that you would invest in and, and raise up with a, a huge skill set. So I, I, I spend a lot of time um, mentoring. Um, I don't, you know, the, it's, it, it's a mixed bag in, in the old days. I used to like on oh, the old days, but I mean, a couple of years ago, what I would do is it's, it's like, a, like anybody who was brave enough to, to have a swing, you know, I would, uh, I would put them on a board and, and I would take them out into big waves, but um, that's kind of counter to, 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 to the code of, of big wave surfing, you know, because it you, you can't just take people out there, it puts other people at risk. Um, um, and then a lot of the guys don't, don't have the skill set either. So I've, I've developed quite a, you know, just a, a very practical metronome or, or way of measuring, you know, who, who to mentor. And, and, and a lot of it is, is, you know, has to do with guys who already have a pre-existing skill set. Um, guys who are, are, are very uh, self-motivated um, uh, and, and who do it for the right reason. I, I call, there's a term I use, it's called blue bloods it's uh, and and a blue blood for me is is somebody who who just loves it for the same reasons that i do which is just the the raw exposure of it you know that the the, the feeling of of um uh, the, the kind of proximity of death and 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 um how to, how to firm's life and and the feeling of um just 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 a love for a wild raw ocean you know uh, it, it doesn't have to be perfect it just has to be big <laughs> and and uh yeah so so i mean i yeah i've been I, i've been very lucky I, i've there, there's a couple of young guys now who who've been with me since they were 14 15 and uh two of them have really risen up to become like real world class surfers you know, and and more important, and more importantly, they they've also grown up to have real uh, in, integrity in that space and kindness uh, with people, and uh, they they they've started handing on the knowledge that that I've given them, and both have far surpassed me as a surfer now, which is humbling. It's very humbling to mentor and and raise guys up. But um, I, I, I like to, you know, within the community that, that we live in, it's, it's always been a value for me to, to share and, and include people. And um, yeah, my, my, my relationships would be my, my primary legacy around, around big wave surfing. It's, it's incredible access that people, you know, when guys get hurt, <laughs> I I've, I've visit them in the hospital. I visit their children in, in the hospital. Um, uh, I, you know, I've, I've been at their weddings. Some of them, I've led them in their vows. <laughs> Some of the, you know, uh, I, I recently got to, to, you know, the only person who wasn't a family member who got to speak at, at someone's funeral, you know, and, and I got to tell them the story of, of how, you know, I took them out to surf giant waves for the first time. So it, it's, it, it, for me, it's a, it's a, a macrocosm of, of the, the circle of life. That, that, I, that I see played out. So it's, yeah, does that, does that answer it? Is it? Yes, absolutely. And, and I kind of want to bring a, a closer lens into this aspect of community that, that you are also, I believe, in addition to all of your skills, a skilled uh, humanist, you understand the human 
you understand uh, the culture. Um, and I, I would like a, maybe a, a word on your uh, concept of surfing culture in general, and then a little more specifically to South African surfing culture and how it, um, it is the same and yet very different than other surfing cultures around the world. Yeah, well, okay. Um, I mean, I would have to speak specifically to big wave surfing culture. Can I, can I do that? Please. Okay, because that's, that's how I found it. So, so I've, I found that there's, that, that communities of like mind or communities of like-minded people tend to geographically move to places where there's, there's geographical rarities, I call them, which are places where waves of a certain size, you know, are big enough that you can, you can paddle into them. I mean, the toe surfing thing's different with Nazareth because it's very much a transient community that congregates there. But, you know, when it comes to paddle surfing, there's, there's people who choose to literally make a life within close proximity to, to these waves. And, um, yeah, I, I've, I've always, I, I've made a point of, of, um, whenever people who are traveling through here for, for big waves come through, you know, uh, like my, my home is, is open to theirs. So over the years, we've, we've hosted people, a, a lot of different guys have, have ridden my boards and, and I've, I've been able to go across and benefit from their kindness in other places too. And it's, it's an amazing thing to go to. Like I, you know, you know I was, I, I got to, you know, when I finally been to, Hawaii a few times but uh, the first time I went um, somebody lent me like a, a, a 9-6 surfboard just just purely because of one of our local guys here who who he knew from you know who'd left a legacy of of friendship in in Hawaii and it surfed well and I yeah it's it's a it's a it's a feeling of 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 belonging i think which which I, I think is is kind of reflected in other communities like you know mountain climbing i think it's the same there you know uh, if you've climbed a certain peak you've got stories stories to to share so it's like I, i've gotten to surf a, a few of the other big waves in the world and it's like you yeah you you enter like like quite a strange it's almost like you become one of the knights of the round table or something when you get to you say that you've you've ridden waves at those places and it's um yeah it's like a feeling of belonging and it's something that i, I hold on to with uh with a kind of a sense of reverence you know that that uh, i kind of belong to this group of people but I, i'm also aware that uh it's it's not something you can belong to forever you know it's it's so physical and a time will come when and I won't be able to belong to that and other people will take my place at the round table and and the elders within my community who are older than me I'm watching them very carefully you know the the guys who are, are aging and are now leaving the scene or trying to leave the scene and say I'm leaving the scene I'm never coming back I'm done and then they turn up on the next swell but they're injured or they you know or, or the guys who have left and it's yeah I'm just I'm trying to you know, I, I had a really bad injury. I had spinal surgery two and a half years ago, and I thought maybe that's, you know, this is it for me. Um, but I, I've made a full recovery. So now it's like when I surf, I feel like I'm, I feel, I feel like I'm, I'm living a life that is already past in some ways, you know, like with such a reverence that I get to do it. So, yeah, I think about that. That's, and I'm trying to prepare for the day. I don't want to be punch drunk, st staggering around, you know. And and yeah. you still have solid years in you. You're you're still doing it. You, mm. Where where are you still desiring to go, or is it or is it a local mindset for for you at this time? I know you've you've been to Jaws. You've do, you've done things in ma amazing waves in Chile. Um, mm. If I'm if I'm if, is that right? Yeah, correct. And, yeah. yeah. You've you've gone you've gone um, all over the world. Are you still looking to do that, or are you um, looking to stay and just focus on your your region? Oh man, Ma Mavericks has been taunting me for so long. I, I, I've been trying to surf it since two thousand and eleven. Just 
you know, we, we sat for, for two weeks waiting in Malibu in 2011. And then I've had, uh, you know, I've had other stages where we've been there within striking distance waiting for, waiting for swell or, you know, I've, I went, to, you know, I sat in Dubai, I had a few weeks, I had a three week window when I waited, you know, on a job where I could have gone. So, I, I mean, and then I was on my way over there at the end of last year and then uh, whatever, we hit multiple levels of COVID stuff. I forget what it was again, you know, our country shut down again and I couldn't go. So yeah, yeah, Mavericks, I, I mean, I want to, I want to go and surf Mavericks before I don't care anymore. Do you know what I mean? Like yeah. I, I, I want to go while, while it still feels important. Uh, it just, it, it just feels like it, yeah. I want to go there and, and, and ride waves there. Like uh, that, that's just one of the, you know, one of the summits, one of the big waves. Yeah. And I think then once I've, uh, once I've done Mavericks and I'll, I'll set my sights on, on something else, but uh, I, I really need to get there and ride waves there. <laughs> and, and you've done Jaws. How was that yeah. for you compared to where, where you've been and what you've done in the, in the ranking system of, of big waves of, of the world? I, I, um, I listened to a lot of uh, Jamie Mitchell's podcast and he actually came on this show one time and spoke to the oh. power of Jaws and how Jaws, Jaws is it. W would you um, concur or disagree? Because you've seen um, yeah. your own dungeons, which is a gnarly wave unto itself um, and in all of its different kinds. Uh, how was your Jaws experience? Well, look, I mean, I... I got really, 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 really lucky with with Jaws. I mean, that's the, uh, uh, that for me is the is that that that's just a situation that that should never happen. Someone, someone of uh, like a some someone like like me getting to go and ride waves there, you know, from literally halfway around the world, and it it that came together. That that was a perfect uh, sort of coming together of my career and. You know, it, it, it's actually the same guy who put me in contact with you. I think he contacted you on Instagram today. He, he did. did. Rock. Yep. So, so, so what Rock did was Rock and I had been working together for a couple of years. And, and uh, one of the things that I do with my photography is I work for airlines. Like I just love shooting for airlines. I love working inside airplanes. Um, and anyway, he, so he was a, he's a contractor for Boeing. And, and he said, hey, man, like we, we've got a job for you. You could come over. It's for a Saudi Arabian airline. And uh, we shoot in Seattle, as I had done with him a couple of times before. And uh, we set it all up and he said, hey, man, you should go to Hawaii afterwards. And I was like, yeah, well, yeah. And uh, I'd, I'd had a particularly good season that year. I'd, you know, in one of our local events here, or like a photo submission, video submission thing, I'd been a finalist and et cetera. And I, and, you know, and I decided if I, if I won that, I was going to go, but I didn't win it. And I thought, man, maybe I should just go anyway. So I, I thought, man, if, if Jaws is on, maybe I'll go and try and surf Jaws. So, yeah, and, and then Rock actually said to me, why don't you take your wife? So we flew her out after the job. And um, I, I couldn't believe it. Like it was literally as we were flying, you know, a couple of days out, um, the, the forecast for Hawaii, I mean, for Jaws was just, it's just clean, windless, big waves. And um I thought, man, this is just, I can't believe this is going to happen. Like, I, like I'm there, I'm, I'm going to get to do this. And my wife's going to be there. And uh, then a couple of days, like, like a day or two before, they, they called the Jaws event on, like straight in that window when I was going to arrive. And I thought, and I was just like, what? Oh, man, this is just like, this is just <laughs> the worst now. The wave's going to be on. I'm headed over, but I won't even be able to surf it. Anyway, we, we flew in and uh, we got lucky in that they actually delayed it by a day. And, um, I got to the the swell was late in coming, and when it's when it finally did come in in the afternoon, it was just me and the first alternate, a guy called Trevor Sven Trevor Carlson. Trevor Carlson, uh, he was the yeah you know, the first alternate who hadn't made it in, and he was out there with his with his ski driver, and um, it was just the two of us paddling into fifteen to eighteen foot I don't know plus jaws, which was which which for me is a very very comfortable uh, size you know 15 to 18 foot jaws was really not you know my first wave i kind of dropped to the bottom and kicked out and i, I mean I, I i just i screamed <laughs> screamed 
yeah, it was unbelievable. I had I had the most I had the most unbelievable waves there, and and it just I uh, it just, um, Trevor Carlson kept saying to me, he said, man, this never happens. He says this never happens. He says Jaws Jaws never has no one on it. He said this is this is rare. This is special. This is rare. This is special. And once he'd seen me go in a couple of waves, he said, all right, all right, come, come. And he put me right on the spot, you know, like something, I mean, something I would have done for somebody else when I, <laughs> back home, but to have, you know, it was one of those community moments, you know, because he knew a friend of mine from back home. And he said, yeah, this on the spot, this ball, I'll see there when the wave comes, you go. And he got me onto like, like a full size set wave of the day that, uh, that, that came through. Um, but, uh, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I was, I managed to scuttle in at, at the end of the day, but, uh, but uh, my, my wife was on the rocks watching me and, and we'd been standing there, uh, you know, for a couple of hours watching it before I went in and looking at the bay and I said, see that spot in the corner there? That's where you never come in. And uh, that's where I came in, man. And, 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 and uh, I made a mistake. I came in in the wrong place and and I ended up getting washed up and down these rocks. I lost my board and I got washed up and down these rocks. Um, and, and my wife, my lovely, gracious, kind wife, thought she was watching me die. <laughs> she, yeah, she just, she, uh, and, and uh, she lost sight of me. And uh, eventually, I mean, I managed to scramble up. I kind of, my board was thrown wide and I managed to scramble up eyes wide up the rocks and I was like I was like oh. I was like nothing hurts I'm like I'm alive and I just got clear enough I looked back and I was like I've just served jaws and just as she crested just as she crested the hill and saw me standing there and I was like ah oh. and and she just she had she tripped out her she'd she'd completely tripped out and and she was uh just in, in uh, an emotionless, uh, unreasonable rage. <laughs> and uh, yeah, uh, it, 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 took, it took a while. Yeah, I mean, she didn't, you know, it's, uh, luckily, luckily we were staying with, with somebody who lives on the island and we drove home in the car and she, you know, very upset and angry and shouting all that stuff. And by the time we got back to the place where we were staying and as we walked in the door, the guy we were staying with, stood up and said, did you do it? And I said, yes. And he said, oh man, I've been here for two years and you've been here one day and you've served Jaws? <laughs> and, and my wife was like, you could see it lifting. And she was like, oh, oh okay, you know, I, I get it. You know, someone else, but yeah, <laughs> the Jaws in, experience, man. In, in that moment of getting thrashed on the rocks, what is in your yeah. mind? Oh, I mean, like, it, it's always the same, you know? It's always the same in those situations. It's like, for me, like, I think, all right, what am I doing? I'm stupid. I should never have been here. Like, I'm, I'm, I'm a Harley. Like, uh, you know, this is like, like, I, I, I don't want to do this again. What am I doing? Is it, is it worth it? Like, all that stuff, you know? Like, it just, I, I, it just kind of feel a bit stupid, you know? Like, somebody has been called out in front of the class by the teacher and scolded because you've been cheating on your test, you know? That's what it feels like. Feels like you've been caught out cheating on your test. You know, you're like you shouldn't have been here. Like, oh, you know. But you go back. You go back again. And yeah. Again. So, so what? Oh, what, yeah. Good what is it in in there where you're like, this must be done? And you, and then how do you conquer that 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 negativity that was there in the in that moment? Well, in that look, I mean, in. in the build up to to a big swell when it comes like a, i feel like i go to my own funeral maybe two three hundred times uh, a, a bit before the swell you know it's it's like you kind of run through your like your own death or like my, my funeral or, or some some version of uh, my, my friend would call it psychic deaths you know he was explaining the other day a psychic death like a sense of it's 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 kind of like it's like something dies i mean it sounds morbid but you know it, it's just and then and then it's like there's like the sense of, of of inevitability it's it's like i'm going to be doing this regardless uh, and I, i'm not going to not do it uh i'm 
I'm, I'm going to do it. Um, and it's, it's, it sounds fate, fatalistic, but it's, but it's not, you know, and it sounds like fate, but it's not, it's, it's, it, it's a draw that is uh, part motivated by like a profound uh, curiosity of the what if, and, uh, and then a, a, like this, this weight of gravity that I keep uh, intonating about and that of like, one day I won't be able to do this, you know, and, 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 and I guess it's that it's that corny quote from from Braveheart, you know, where he's he's marching up and down in front of the lines of the soldiers and saying, you know, those of you who are scared and want to turn away, you know, who of you, if you, you know, if if, if you know, and and when you're an old man and you're sitting by the fire and you're and 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 you're scared and you're and and you're aching and whatever, who of you wouldn't give anything to come back to this moment now? you know to fight this fight and 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 to risk everything and it's i think it strikes at at, at the heart of it. it's 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 not just it's i think it's it it's the heart of a man i think you know and it doesn't have to be big wave surfing it's 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 family you know it's um maybe it's a public speaking or something you know but i mean wh wh whatever it is it's, it's just this the, the the sense of if if i don't do this now a future version of myself is going to regret it. So I'm, I'm going to do it for my future self. <laughs> yeah. Would you say conquering the fear then makes the aftermath of living much sweeter? Yes, it does. Hey, um, hang on. I can just hear that. Uh, that Steph Gilmore's just won her eighth title. Coax, has Steph just won? Jeez, that's wild. Okay, I love, amazing. I love it. That's my, uh, my that's my daughter's favorite surfer. So that's that's great. Oh man, yeah. she's gonna be sucked inside. Yeah, she's ten. She's stoked. It's great. Oh sweet. <laughs> oh man. But um, yeah. But but uh, sorry, I'll ask that question again. Yeah. So I, I was kind of summing it up in my own words, gathering what you said. And it, I guess if fear is X, you conquer yeah. your what fear, whatever that might be. And to each, to each person only knows what their fear is. But one, yeah. when the self conquers the fear, the living yeah. after that moment is sweet. Uh, okay, and, got it. Gotcha. And you, you conquering these big waves li lets your life the sweeter as it, as it goes. Whereas if you didn't, you would not, you would be almost resentful of yourself. I don't know. Is that? Yeah. Yeah, it is, hey? It's a yeah, you know, it's and and it's it's yes, it is, eh? and it's it's part it's partly to do with like it's it's such a privilege, it's it's such a privilege, you know. Like there's a, there's only I, I know that there's a, there's more big wave surfers now than there ever has been, but 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 there's still only a few a few thousand people, you know, on on Earth really who who get to 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 use like you know just just the two hands to to kind of momentarily match match the speed of of one of these giant waves. You know, long enough to be able to drop down the front and and to momentarily, you know, just stand on one of these things and feel that sensation going through your feet, and and, and to and to see the shape of that water standing in front of you, and to, yeah, and I guess you know to to survive it, and and um, yeah, it's a privilege, and it's and uh, you know, I don't want to take you. Know, I, you want to take it lightly, you know. It's so you want to hold on to it lightly, like we keep saying, and be able to let it go when the time's right. But you know, while while you can do it, it's 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 just a it's it's an immense privilege. Eh? I feel so lucky. I feel so lucky. What would you say to those who would like to get into um, the the arena of big wave surfing? Um, how, what is what is something that you would you would advise? How do they know if they're blue blood? Blue blood. Nice, 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 nice. There you go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. How do you know if you're blue blood? Eh? You have to. Yeah, I mean, I mean, motivation's so, so important. You know, that, that, that refers exactly to the to the blue blood thing. You know, you you have to love it for this for the sake of the uh, of the exposure, and and you have to. You basically got to be very comfortable 
jumping off, like I said, you know, the highest, the highest diving board at the school swimming pool. And then once you're there, you know, it's the equivalent of someone emptying that swimming pool on top of your head multiple times. Uh, um, you just, um, geography is, 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 is very important, you know, uh, that, which is why like big wave surfing is primarily an, an older person's game because it, it takes, you know, when, when you're a kid, you don't have much choice over where you live, but as you get older, you have to migrate to a place where you can, where you can make, where you can make money. The kids in our community, there's, or there's so many good teenagers who come, but at a certain age, like they, they're gone again, you know, so, so, you know, very, you know, whereas, whereas those of us who are established here and have a life established are able to stay, stay around us. Um, so so yeah I, yeah i mean ge geography is very important mentoring i mean there's that there's that again it's a bit corny referring to it but that's that movie chasing mavericks did you see that absolutely so so i mean like that's uh, that's mentors you you know you, you you need a mentor you need to be around people who who look after you and and who, who believe in you uh, someone who's going to hold the door open to you, someone who can pass pass on knowledge. It's a, uh, it's, yeah, it's, 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 it's kind of a, it's an ancient thing in, in that way. It's like a, it's a tribe of elders. Cokes. I'm just going to close the door to our, our room. Yeah. 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 Well, I just um, want to say thank you again for, for your time. And I've, I've one final question for you. Oh yeah. And uh, yeah, uh, it's a, it's a macro question. Um, what, what is the meaning of life according uh, to Dougal Peterson? Okay, well, so, um, yeah, like I said earlier, I, I, I got to speak at my friend's funeral the other day, um, which, which again made me think about, you know, when, you know, going, being at a funeral makes you think like, how would I, how, how would I like to be remembered? Okay, which how you would like to be remembered maybe is is a way of understanding what is what do you value in life? You know. Um, so, I I I value relationship and friendship. Hey. Um, and I really think that that. Um, you know, life, life is about life, life is about family and life is about friendship. Um, and it's, and it's about doing for others, you know, that you would doing unto others what you would have done unto you. Um, it's, it's about uh, integrity and principles. And it's about, um, you know, <laughs> it's, it's about doing the right thing. Eh? I mean, I could get I could speak a lot about that, but you know, in in a paraphrased, yeah, incredible. Is that on? Very ex extremely well said, and and I think everyone could take a lot from that. Thank you, Sean. Well, this has been a uh, incredibly legendary talk. I I I, I am um, the mission of this activity here is to to lay a record for the future generations to draw inspiration from so uh it speaks to to your your larger concept and um i thank you for your time today and in, in helping us uh lay this this digital record on the on the, these matters of water and the aesthetics of it and how it can uplift our our lives and through surfing photography so again thank you very much Absolute pleasure, Sean. So good to meet you. So good to meet come you. Come on, surf with me sometime, eh? Yeah, dude. I, I would love to come out. Um, like I said, I know Alan 
um, your good friend. And, um, and he was one of my, he was extremely generous as one of my first uh, interviewees. So uh, much love to you guys. Thank you. Yeah, and, and, and vice versa, you know, we don't have big waves, but we do have hurricane swell. It gets a little bit overhead at my local beach down the road and uh, we froth and we, we, we get stoked. So um, <laughs> if you like long boards and a, an occasional short board, if I you're love long boards, yeah, we're, we're, we're doing board. it. Um, yeah. So look us up in Wrightsville beach, North Carolina, anytime. Okay. Thank you, Sean. Thank you very much, Dougal. I appreciate it. And um, um, let's stay in touch. Okay. I'll let you know when this comes out also. Have a great okay. night. You too. Bye.